Thanks, Abby. Yes, uh, a really important few fixtures coming up the last three matches of the day, starting with this battle between Chris Mason and Wes Newton. Both of them on four points. One of them will stay there. And do you think that perhaps both players will feel a little bit disappointed if at the end of the day with just two wins from five? I think Chris Mason will certainly feel disappointed due to the standard that he's played. But I think Wes Newton would kind of get what he deserved. I don't think he deserves much more than that, really. When we look at the stats and things, you know, he's averaged... 75 in his opening game against Gary Robson. First line, 85 it's in his second throw one first against O'Shea. 77 on. and then 82. So you can't be really expecting many more points than the four. Well, Chris Mason 44. on four, despite averaging 91 over the day with a high of 95. And this is a game that, like Abby said at the start of the show, Chris Mason in the preview was saying he wanted 100. this one. There's some history here between the two in terms of results, but also Chris Mason told us he's going to get stronger as the day goes on. 60. He gets much stronger than a 91. He's going to find himself at the top of the table and staying there. One on the end, on the, 40. On the side, Newton probably will feel that he should have got the better of Robson earlier on, so maybe he could be on more points already. I wonder if 18. Mason having this long break between competitive darts has actually done well because all the old scar tissue and the mental battering that dart players succumb on a regular basis, he's been completely out of the way of that. And 91. He'll almost be like starting a complete fresh. Well, are we going to see the, the second coming? Now, we joke about it, but the level he's been producing... 83 would be competitive in 170. more places than this. Let's just put it that way. I think with the standard we're seeing here and the levels that he's able to reach at the moment, one on the wrapping one up in 95.43, are we potentially looking at the 2023 Seniors World Champion? 30. Chris, you require 36. Because there's certainly time to yeah, that's game put than the further first work line. onto Chris this. And that's a 13 dart breaker throw. And if he can maintain this, he Second doesn't line find much Chris more. Maintain first. this, this game is on. fine. This will put him in the running for that title. There's not many people in that field that will be able to live with this. 100. One hundred and eighty. Newton responds. One hundred and forty. I think one thing that's going to happen at the end of today is Chris Mason is going to leave here. One hundred. A newfound respect, I think, within the darting community. To come back after being out for so long and produce darts of this quality consistently. 81. Shows how much class he's got in his darting game. Yeah, really looking forward to commentating with him again after actually seeing him play really well. 121. Sure we won't mention it at any point. Is right. there a backdoor exit out of this place? 41. Where should require 100? Well, we know that he can talk the talk, but he's walking the walk right now. Uh, Where's Newton? I said he responded player. with a 180 at the start of the leg, and he takes out the turn for a brilliant leg of darts. The best of the day, in fact. An 11 dart. Third leg is West the throw game. first. Game on. They talk the talk, walk the walk. Is he strutting the strut at the minute with this level of performance? One on the M40. But I tell you one thing, he must be wondering what he's done because everyone's finding their best today against him. It's like they've realised he's the man to beat. One on the M40. Yeah, certainly if people didn't know what to expect, by the time for Wes Newton in particular to play him has come around, 47. he knows that he's going to have to be on his metal. I will remind you again, Chris Mason, 
is the 16 to 1 outsider. One on an own 40. Just for this group alone. Never mind the week. Yeah, I think we're going to keep rephrasing that to was and was the 12 to 1 and was the 10 to 1 and was maybe 45. the 2 to 1 at some point. If we don't wake up with Chris Mason as favourite for this group, I will be surprised. 96. Well, if he loses this game and then Tony O'Shea wins against Mark Dubbridge, O'Shea, who was the favourite before, will be four points clear of him. In fact, if he loses this game, one, one of those two is going to be four Chris points clear anyway. But there is another two days of action to come. There was a nibble going around a few years ago. That Chris might have played Chris Uruguay, 134. I wonder if he's going to be a little bit more tempted after seeing his return to sort of competitive action. The UK Open is shown on the broadcast that he works, so it would make for a great 19. feature, wouldn't it, to take the cameras there and watch his quest. They've now got footage to use of him playing good darts if they want to. I'm sure something can be arranged for a, a small fee. 16. Contact at Chris Murphy 180 on Twitter. 14. I'll be the broker. Yeah, that's game short and a bad. You're right. What has he done? What has he done? Played well, and everyone has decided to play well against him. Because after three legs here, Forward Chris Mason is averaging in three figures, on. yet he's behind. Wes Newton sees this through. Chris Mason. 57. He's going to feel sick. He's going to be the standout performer in terms of stats. But only on four points after 81. five games. Do you know, I know exactly what he'll say as well. Despite playing like this, getting those defeats, he will say, I remember why I stopped playing now. One on the end, 34. Absolutely. And that's one of the hard things as a dart player sometimes. You put all the preparation in, you do all the work, you go to the event, you produce a level of performance. 96. And you come home with nothing. And... I've I've had that same sort of vibe when you're driving back from Pro Tour and one on an forty. Put all the practice in, the hours in. You've done everything right. You know you've gone there with the best preparation you can. You're putting a good level of performance, and you've come back with nothing. One on an forty. Chris, you require one hundred and seventy. It's cost you money to go and do that, and you you come back a very bitter guy. That's when I say that I've sometimes maybe been away from that for a couple of years. Might be an advantage here because it's not a continuation of that feeling. And if he's genuinely, genuinely come into this on event with no expectations of himself, determined to enjoy it, then that might just be a recipe for success for Chris. 52. Almost West found the recipe there, 44. but now Wes Newton could leave. A bitter taste in his mouth. Goes for four tops. Yeah, that's and getting nails short it. the Ford lag. West Newton. You can see Chris Mason there. Well, you don't really need a penny for his thoughts because you can read those perfectly. Fifth lag is West to throw first. Game on. One hundred. Sometimes they're just people you love to beat, isn't they? And it's like everyone's one on decided 40. Chris Mason is that man. He's still averaging over 100 in this one. And he's 3-1 down. It's unsurprising to say as well. I think he's looked the most solid in and around that treble 20. His darts 16. have been... The misses have been by a smaller margin, should I put it that way. Consistent angle of entry. Consistent depth entry of the dart. Everything about his game today has been rock solid and consistent. 85. The most mistakes I think he's made is actually when a couple of times he's needed big numbers, he's missed those. Sixteen. Well, it spoiled my day anyway. Now I'll have to hope for Paul Nicholson to be useless. You've got a book of lines ready, haven't you, for when it happens? One on the well, end, I have been doing a little bit of uh, extra curricular activity, shall we say? I've just 
59. If you are watching, Richard Paul, I'll draw your attention to the fact that Matt Aker just said when it happens then. I have noticed Chris Murphy sat here scribbling out Chris Mason lines as the day's gone on. I have to rewrite those yeah. tonight, something a bit more positive. Absolutely. It's been magical, Mason, today. One but he's going to need a bit of magic to get out of this hole because Wes Newton piles on the pressure once again. There's no margin for error here. One dart left to stay in the match, perhaps. 48. And he doesn't Wes find the double. A disgusted look on his face. And Newton can take the win. 10. Well, for once, should require 10. for once, Mason is let off the hook. Yeah, that's game short than the fifth one. in the commentary box Chris, Chris Mason. Mason two weeks ago for the full week, and we spoke about darts at length. One of the things he says, he says, I don't like Six to use like the phrase, it's Chris to throw first. but at times game you need on. that little bit of luck. That is what that means. Match starts missed by Wes Newton. He turns around, wins this, gets One two points. 40. All of a sudden, the league table looks absolutely different and strongly in favour of Chris Mason. One yeah, it's interesting 30. as well when you speak about that look, because often we focus on just the match starts, but you listen to Michael Van Gogh excellent at it when he does post-match interviews and his opponent might have missed a couple of match starts, but then we go, well, what about One the three that I missed 30. in leg three, the four I missed in leg seven that they won? And that's what Mason will be feeling like. Maybe the, he deserved that bit of fortune because he went against him for much 82. of the match and much of the day. Oh, definitely gone against him for the day. I mean, we look at Tony O'Shea's best performance of the day was against Chris Mason in that victory. Same for Mark Dudbridge. The best we've seen from him today was that victory six. against Chris Mason. Well, the best we're seeing from Chris Mason is now. He's actually producing his best stuff in this match. He's averaging just shy of 100. 85. Chris, you require 126. At the very start of the day, he will get better as this goes. So, so far, he's actually called this pretty spot on. 42. Almost like he does it for a living. Well, they usually say, don't give up the day job. But, Chris, you might have to. 90. Chris, you require 84. This to stay in it. Gave himself a clap on the last one. Maybe give himself a pat on the back if he hits the ball. 59. That's a well-thrown dart. Should require 110. Yeah, it's the closest he's got all day to that target. But he is going to come back. Fortune favouring him all of a sudden. 80. Can he make the most of Chris the look? require 25. Uses the eights. Fours. No score. He's busted. West but Wes Newton miscounted, didn't he, in the previous visit? Had 48 left, hit an 18. To leave himself the dodgy double 15. Will it matter? It does. He goes inside. Only one more dart at double for Wes Newton to win the game. 22. And he hasn't found it. And the West math has made a difference 25. there. There's a confused look on Chris Mason's face and as if saying, what's going on? How's this happening? Yeah, that's He's got a chance to put it right. Slide. He takes it all Chris the way. Mason. Gives us a little fist pump as well. Wes Newton will throw first in the deciding leg. 7-10 final arc. It's Wes to throw first. Game on. But Chris Mason's scoring power. When we look at those... One on the end, 40. The plus sections, the 140s. Wes Newton just opened there to put himself onto four. So those 140s that Chris is hitting that he's going to need in this one. Yeah, Wes has got a 16. couple of maximums that he's outscoring Mason in that department and has been sharper on the doubles. But the fact that they've hit the same the end, amount of doubles and Mason's had more does show you that Mason is... Slightly edging the scoring stakes in this match. And that stat doesn't include the 134 and the 137s that he's doing with those 40. switching. So those double treble combinations of a strong factor is now up to eight. Well, remember, 59. the winner of this match will end the day on six points. The loser will stay on four. 
Because of the leg difference of Tony O'Shea and Mark Dubridge, the winner of this game will finish a day in second place. One on an M40. Said he needed those 140s. That was the category that was going to give him a chance in this one. He's got two there back to back. Gives him a shot at the 161. Chris, you require There's an argument for Newton. Maybe to have switched to the ball there. Because he might have to go for the ball at the end. There's an argument for Mason to one go for the ball here, but he plants it perfectly in the treble 20. 81. Drama at the end here. That was his third double treble combination. It's threes for the match. Game. Oh, and he gets there. It the is match. cruel West for Chris Houston. Mason. You can see what he thinks of it. It's all smiles and embrace from Wes Newton, who decides to kill Chris Mason with kindness in the end. But look at that. Another mid-90s average for Chris Mason. But it's another defeat for Chris Mason, who despite being the best player in terms of standard today, you have the highest running average for the day. There's no doubt about that. He's only picked up two wins from his first five matches in Group A and will have work to do to try and top the table. That, incidentally, is where Wes Newton sits right now. He won't finish there because Tony O'Shea and Mark Dubridge, who both already have six points as well, will play in the last match of the day. But before that is a battle between John Walton, who hasn't got a point yet, against Gary Robson.